So if we consider emerging therapies which help us to study neuroinflammation in more detail um, in future, then let's distinguish between the cellular, the animal and the human level. On a cellular level, I think what's uh, urgently needed is uh, more information on protein levels and protein change, uh, changes by mass spectrometry or by mass cytometry. And this is because uh, a lot of transcript Atomic data have been accumulated now of which we know that only a minor percentage is actually being translated in biologically meaningful proteins. So while all this wealth of transcriptomic and uh, epigenetic information is really um, important and gives us a hint what's going on, I think we need a more detailed information on the protein level. On the animal side I would believe that humanization of um, mouse models would be a big leap forward as well as the more precise and more sophisticated analysis by techniques such as three or two photon laser scanning in vivo microscopy which helps us to really look in the uh, living brain of mice and doing this even in anesthetized or non-anesthetized mice which can conduct, uh, for example, um, memory uh, task while they are uh, imaged for neuronal network activity or for inflammatory cell activity. Those models um, need to be uh, further developed and uh, one step ahead is to use optogenetic uh, means to modulate inflammatory signals. So, to, for example, by the use of uh, light responsive uh, Cree elements, which allow us to um, express uh, or suppress um, uh, single inflammatory molecules and study the effect, um, for example, around uh, beta amyloid deposits or even prior or after the deposition. So um, on a human level, we need information on the precise temporal and spatial resolution and one of the ways forward would be to develop um, PET ligands beyond TSB4. For example, um, by developing ligands for the cannabinoid receptor 2, uh, for CSF1 receptor, for COX2 and there might be many other targets. Another important uh, way of going forward on the human level would be to use iPSC-derived uh, microglia-like cells to study individual responses to treatment and move um, the diagnostics or the therapeutic interventions to a more personalized level. So I think these are very exciting times for everybody working in this field and there are almost uh, new findings uh, every week or uh, every day, so to say. Um, there's a lot more out there and we haven't in, uh, understood the interaction between microglia cells and other brain cells uh, in greater detail yet. For example, their modulation of uh, oligodendrocyte function, their modulation of astroglial function. There's a lot more to learn, a lot, lot more to study. And for that reason, I'm wondering whether we should be more careful in suggesting very quickly clinical interventional trials um, using inflammatory targets. I think the uh, innate immune system and the adaptive immune system are very delicate systems. We also need to consider that we might change things in the periphery to the harm of our pa uh, patients. So I think we need a lot more studies and a lot more insight before we actually can move into clinical trials, but it's certainly worth doing it.